3DS Max 2024.2 introduced a brand new conform modifier. This modifier allows you to project the vertices of a conform object onto the target object's surface using various methods. It also provides many options to refine the result further after the initial conform operation has been performed. As a modifier, it works well with all others and provides a great non-destructive procedural workflow. In this video, we'll learn the basic workflow of the conform modifier, along with different projection methods and options. So I've got this flange and a bent plane in my scene. I want to place the flange on the bent plane without any gaps. Let me select the flange and add a conform modifier. Then I'll turn on the pick object button and choose the plane. You can see that the flange dropped down and conformed to the shape of the plane. But wait, how come the top part of the flange still keeps its original shape? In most other DCC tools, conform would just flatten the whole flange onto the plane unless you manually select only the bottom vertices. That's because the default projection method of the conform modifier is a special volume method. First, it moves all vertices of the object without any deformation, so that its pivot lands on the target surface as if dropped onto it along the chosen axis and direction. The default axis is negative Z, so the flange will drop downward. Next, the vertices affected by the influence parameter along the projection axis will deform, while maintaining their distance from the pivot point. The default influence value is 25%, which means only the bottom 25% of vertices will deform. Then the falloff parameter controls how smoothly the deformation fades past the edge of the influence zone. The default falloff is also 25%, so the deformation smoothly transitions from 25% to 50%. Here's a tip. The conform modifier can output this blend amount as a soft selection in the advanced rollout. If you set the selection output to selection, it will display the volume influence amount as soft selection. Okay, the flange looks like it's conformed nicely to the surface, but it's still pointing upward. We might want it to align with the surface direction. Sure, we could rotate the flange manually, but that sounds like a lot of work. Luckily, there's a Use Normal setting to make this easier. Set it to 100% and the Conform modifier will align the object with the surface. So that's the gist of the volume method. It's a unique hybrid conform approach that makes it easy to place objects onto uneven surfaces. Next method is Shrink Wrap. In this scene, there's a wooden handle, and I've created a wrap from a circle using the Extrude and Array modifiers. I want to wrap this around the handle. Select the wrap object and apply a conform modifier, then pick the handle as the target. It did something, but it doesn't look quite right. That's because volume is the default method. Change it to shrink wrap. The shrink wrap method projects all vertices onto the surface along the chosen direction. The default direction is along the negative vertex normals. It looks good now. But there seems to be a visual issue in the viewport because the conform and target objects are perfectly aligned. To fix this, use the offset parameter. This value moves the conform object's vertices along the surface normals of the target. I'll set the offset to 0.2. Another tip. You can use the strength parameter to visualize the conform effect. When strength is set to 0, you see the original position. When set to 100, it shows the fully conformed shape. Now I'll add a shell modifier and a turbo smooth modifier to give the wrap some thickness. All right, we're almost done, but I'm not really liking the spaces between the wraps. I want them to overlap without gaps. But if I just reduce the spacing in the array modifier, they'll intersect and that's not what we want either. So here's a cool trick. Make a copy of the wrap object. Go into its array modifier and change the random seed for rotation then move the second wrap so it covers the gaps. Now just add the first wrap as a second target object for the second wrap object. The conform modifier lets you pick more than one target object. Even though they're actually two separate wrap objects, it looks like one continuous wrap. Before we explore the next conform option, let's take a moment to talk about the direction setting. Earlier when I demonstrated the volume method, I used the axis direction. By default, this is set to the negative Z axis, based on the object's pivot. That's why, in our example, the flange drops straight down. 
the vertices are being projected along that negative z direction. You can change which axis to use and whether the projection goes in the positive direction, the negative, or whichever is closest to the target surface. I've got a sphere and a hemisphere. I want the sphere to conform to the hemisphere. I'll use the shrink wrap method here because it's easier to visualize that way. At first, using the default negative z doesn't do anything. That's because the sphere was created from the front view, so z isn't the right direction. Let's switch it to the y-axis instead. Now, as I rotate the sphere around the z-axis, you'll see the projection begin to take shape. The negative y-direction is now facing the hemisphere, and the sphere starts to conform. As it moves further inside the hemisphere, the projection shifts to the bottom surface. That's because the vertices have passed through the surface and are now inside the hemisphere. If I flip the direction to positive, it does the opposite and conforms outward instead. If I choose closest, the vertices conform to the nearest surface, whether it's in the positive or negative direction. For example, when the sphere is in this position, setting the direction to positive y does nothing. There's no surface to conform to along y. If I move the sphere over here and set the direction to negative, same thing. It does nothing along y. But if I switch to closest, it always finds the nearest surface to conform to along y. But what if I need a custom direction? I mean, I could rotate the pivot point, but that feels kind of risky. Instead, you can use the helper direction option. This lets you define the conform direction using the vector between the object's pivot and a helper. I've created an arrow object and added a look at constraint to the helper to make things easier to visualize. As you can see, the conform direction now lines up with the arrow when helper direction option is used. The last option we'll cover is the closest point method in shrink wrap. Now I want to wrap the wooden handle we used earlier with a cord. I started with a helix spline and added a conform modifier. Yep, conform works on splines too not just meshes. In this case, I'm using the closest point method since splines don't have surfaces or vertex normals. Closest point is the best option when conforming a spline to curved or uneven targets. Choose shrink wrap from the method dropdown. Choose closest point from the direction dropdown. Pick the target object. It already looks pretty good, but you might notice a few spots where the result isn't quite what you expect. That's because the mathematically closest point isn't always the one you'd expect visually. And with splines, conform only uses vertex positions, so these small issues could happen. To clean it up, you can use normalize spline modifier. And again, it's fully procedural, so you can always go back and tweak any setting at any time. If you want to simulate the cord wrapping over itself multiple times, try using that overlapping conform trick I showed earlier. All right, that wraps up our introduction to the conform modifier video. Thanks for watching.